What's up guys, welcome back, Itachi with the straw hat. I've never drawn him with the straw hat. You know when he arrives in Kanoha for that first, well, it's not the first time he arrives, obviously, because <laughs> he's from there. But, um, you know, he comes back all dressed up as an Akatsuki sort of member. So, landscape page, use a pencil and an eraser and hit pause if we go too fast. We're gonna start with his eyes. Typical Itachi eyes, right? Center point of my page is about here center line right the eyes are a little bit higher than my halfway okay so let's go for it so we'll go diagonal and then it goes straight across and Itachi has like eyelashes right so like like we'll spike it up at the end here for one right, and this kind of has another little eyelash here and then maybe another one on top. I mean, this is all just like a black, dark area here. So he just has these like spiky little eyelashes in the corner. Three or four usually. Right, and then the bottom eyelid line, it can join this or there can be a little bit of a gap. Usually there's a gap, right? So we just go this way and then across the bottom right and then he can sometimes have little eyelashes sticking off the corner here so like just little black spikes there not too big okay sometimes as well there's like a little extra line at the front coming off just this way Right, so he's got those big red Sharingan eyes, right? So we'll go a half circle right, coming down from, say, this point where the eyelid sort of changes direction, just about there, right? And we'll curve it down and around. So you're doing a sort of a semicircle or three quarters of a circle, you know, just a circle with the top of it kind of cut off, going around his eye there. Pupil in the middle. Nice. And then his Sharingan. So he's got like the standard Sharingan in this. So we can see two commas out the side. So we go a dot there. And we'll put one here. And the other one is up above, like up here somewhere so you can't see it. And then we put little dashes coming off them. Yep, like so. And they usually have like another sort of circle or dots, like a broken line going around these here. And then it's red. So we've got an eyelid line just above, like going up and across. And then he has an eyebrow, fairly spiky, pointy sort of eyebrow going back this way. It goes sort of behind his hair somewhere here. And there might be a bit of a nose line at the front. And we'll just thicken it up, but you want to make sure it gets skinny as it goes back, a little pointy back here. And then of course he's got those cheek lines, those lines coming down, sort of from, they nearly join the eyelid line there and then just come diagonally down his cheek. As far as I know, he's the only character in Naruto with those. All right, we'll go over and do the other eye. So you're about eye width. So the width of his eye fits in between the two eyes. So that's where you know to start the next eye. Now these, some of these eyes are like the corners of them are like cut off by his hair, but we'll draw them all in and we can erase afterwards. You could stop sort of here if you want to before you get the spiky eyelashes, but it's easier sometimes to just draw them in sometimes. And then we go across and then we start adding these spiky eyelashes. So two or three. Add another one here. Do, do, 
do 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 And then the bottom eyelash again it can it can join this line or there can be a bit of a gap between them it just comes across to the tear duct and then we will add two little spikes along the bottom just for eyelashes down there so then again we have that half circle sort of same you want it the same sort of position you know you want it to be starting sort of there about the same size as that there and it's just like a little half circle semicircle type shape or a circle with the top cut off something around here right and then we have the pupil roughly in the middle and you want your pupils to be like about the same size And then we have the Sharingan, so two commas that we can see. One here, one here, and then that extra sort of broken line just going around the eye there. We've got an eyelid line just above, coming across. And then his eyebrow, just going across this way again. And it gets real pointy at the end and then thicker at the front and spiky. And then we have a bit of a nose line just coming down here and then the cheek line again. Okay. Bum, bum. So just below here we have nostrils. So that's all they sort of draw in for Naruto characters and their noses. We just have two sort of curved lines like this. And then his mouth underneath, relatively flat, serious guy, right? So and the mouth sort of starts, say, underneath the inside of his eye here on both sides. So we just go up and across. Typical sort of anime mouth, unimpressed sort of mouth shape. And then his bottom lip just underneath, like so. It's a very sort of deadpan expression on his face. So his collar comes across his chin, so we can't see it really. So it comes, let's say the whole way across, just here. I think it like goes the full way over here. And then, so his face is kind of framed in by this and the hat as well, so like, and it's got fingers there, so it's real wide. But say, so we'll go with his hair first. Maybe, or his jaw. No, we'll do his jaw. So his jaw comes up this way, right, diagonally. There. And then the hair sort of comes down from underneath that straw hat. Like so, and maybe you can see his neck muscle there. Maybe like a little bit here as well. And then we have a hair spike that goes back up this way. And then longer hair goes down here. And do something similar over this side. So we have a long hair spike. Another one up here. And he seems to have a few that come down across the face, but we'll get that we'll get the hat in first. And there's another bit of a hair spike here. And he has this dangly piece of jewelry here. Okay, so I guess we gotta do the hat before we do anything else. So it's really big, right? So it's like very wide. 
So it starts like out here and it goes all the way to, it's about his head, two heads nearly. So like if he took his face, it would go once, twice, and then once, twice. It's nearly double the size of his face either side. So we're aiming for about there. And you gotta curve this line around all the way to there, okay? So we'll go. Tricky enough now to keep it on track. And it can be a bit bumpy, you know, because it is a straw hat, so. Okay. So now down from this, he has all these white sort of pieces of fabric sort of all coming down here, okay? And then he's fingers on this side, but we can see one row of them down there. And then he's like a Katsuki sort of red color goes down here, you know, the red part of it, that line. We've got like some fold lines just in here. And then we have that piece of jewelry, right? So he's got like a little piece of something hanging down here. It looks like feathers or something. And it's got like a ball and then two lines and then another circle shape and then a little ball there like so So we have a hand on this side and then no hand on this side, just sort of normal, right? So we'll go with these white sort of pieces of paper that kind of hang down here. And there's maybe some gaps in them as they go down. And that way. There. And we just keep sort of going in the middle of the gap. And at some point, his shoulder sort of comes out from here. So, a male's shoulders are about head width, right? So, the width of his face sort of would show you where the shoulder sort of stops, roughly there, right? And then we have some more of those going down behind the shoulder. These pieces of paper sort of hanging down like that. So his shoulder might go in that way then. So the rest of that straw hat then it becomes, it's like the whole Kage sort of hat. It goes up to a point and then down to there and then it has an extra little rim line edge line coming around this way you just follow that sort of shape again and it has a brown triangle up here and then we have texture lines right so anything you when you're drawing with line you know if you want it to look a certain way you want to add some texture to it you know, if you draw dinosaurs on this channel, you'll know what I mean. So texture lines can be helpful to just make it seem a bit different to everything else that you're drawing on the page. You know, so this, these lines going in a certain direction and pattern just makes it look like there's bumps kind of on it. So if you're drawing things texture, especially with black line drawings or line drawings without 
too much shading, texture lines often help. Now, so his hand is like just tipping that hat, right? So he's like tipping it, raising it up off his eye. So he's like lifting it up with two fingers. So. We'll start, we want it to connect with the edge. So we'll probably have to start with the fingers, right? So say we have So he's got his ring finger and then this finger here, right? So it kind of comes up over. So we'll like curve the start of the finger there, right? And your fingers normally have three segments. One, two, three, right? So this will be the first one. One, two, and then a third just goes down sort of behind his ring there. And they have three segments on the top as well, right? So it goes, no, meets a knuckle down that way, and then down the back, out towards the other knuckle at the back of the hand, okay? And this can be kind of pointy maybe. And then the back of the hand comes down that way. All right, we gotta add more fingers up here. So finger, hands are very hard. So don't beat yourself up if you find this like extremely difficult. Take your time. They're never easy to draw. So then it comes up the other finger behind. First segment. Second segment sort of curves up. And then third segment and then around for the tip of the finger and we can see a bit of a fingernail there so his next finger has a ring on it right it's like a red ring with some sort of calligraphy japanese kind of i'll just roughly do this now you'll probably be able to do it better than me but it's just a red circle with a gray rim around it which goes around this finger so this knuckle comes out from there second segment third segment and then around for the tip of that finger back up and it goes behind the next finger there right and this could have like a fingernail on it there so that means our little fingers just here bent over Curves down, like so, around to there. Let me just have some skin folds. And then it's just the back of that finger that way, and maybe another knuckle line. And we just has, have his thumb going up in behind here, right? So your thumb is quite wide, usually just down behind there. And then we have the palm of his hand, just underneath that way. And then his wrist, so it goes quite long and thin. Not overly muscular, you know, they're not Dragon Ball characters kind of. We just have kind of normal limbs. This is like goes this way because his sleeve cuts it off, right? It goes, changes direction that way, that's all. It's not like a weird <laughs> muscle wastage problem. No offense, of course, to anyone who does have muscle wastage. Um, and then this curves that way. And then this goes for the paper that comes down from his hat. And then we just gotta fill in those lines with more white sort of sections here. Like that. 
And of course you'd erase the lines underneath the fingers or color over them or whatever it is you would like to do with them, of course. Oh, and he's bits of hair that stick down over his eyes a little bit. Like, so like, mm, do I want to do them? I don't know. Mm, yeah, he does have like extra ones that come down over the eyes. So it would be weird if we didn't do it. So, like that. Maybe another one just like here. Okay. Hitachi Straw Hat. He's like in one piece. I hope it's helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.